Let's try intro number two. The Nifty Fifty. I mean, do I really need to say anything more about this land? <laughs> I mean, if you're generally interested in photography, you'll have heard of the good old Nifty 50 um, and how everybody recommends it as the first go-to lens. Now, I've had a Nifty 50 on every single system. Nikon today, which we're gonna be using, it's a Nikon D3100 with a F1850 millimeter lens on it. Uh, I can't remember which one it is, but it's one I bought like eight years ago. I still use it to this day. Uh, I've also had the USM 250mm 1.8 for Canon and I have a vintage one that I use on my Sony. It's a old Pentax F250 and 50mm is just going straight off the bat. I would strongly recommend picking one of these up and we're going to take a little look into why now. But first off we're going to go around Fort Dunry here uh, I'm going to use this 12 year old camera uh, and a 50 f1.8 and you'll see what sort of results you can still get out with this pretty much today would be like a 300 euro setup I'm going to guess ish I'd estimate uh, which is a really good entry point for somebody who's maybe just starting photography I feel like that's somewhere you can go and you'll get like a really versatile decent ish in low light setup <laughs> at hand today 50 millimeter lens and why I would highly recommend one of these so instantly for something like this a really old camera they're really good at um, boosting the low light performance for relatively cheap most 50 millimeter lenses even if you go down those vintage routes will be f2.8 or faster uh, with it being quite cheap to get f1.8 versions is that these are about 150 euros 200 euros for a for this Canon or Nikon equivalent 50mm basic upgrade lens and it will be night and day over your kit lens. Of what like a 50 millimeter looks like. I've got Sony with my uh, Sigma 24 to 70 on it. I'm gonna lock it to 50. I'm gonna do a shot down the barrel of this gun behind me and it's gonna be at f5. And I'll do f5 on this and then I'll do f5 uh, on my Nikon with the crop and you can see what it's like on a crop versus a full frame basically. <laughs> Anyway, leading on from our uh, low light performance discussion with these lenses being like super fast, 50 millimeters is that kind of area where you start drifting into uh, bokeh, blurred backgrounds, bokeh, bokeh, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's where it kind of starts to become very prevalent in your photos. Great way of directing viewers into what you want them to actually look at and it's you get really good bokeh with 50 mils that's what i'll say it's just nice it's the 50 or 85 but you can get it everywhere but i mean looks best i think uh, at 50 that's my opinion anyway it's an opinion piece <laughs> Another thing to appreciate about 50mm lenses is they tend to be small, especially if you go for those F1.8s. Um, they're really small, light and discreet. The more gear you tend to gather as well, you tend to start appreciating small and light things. And I know now myself, like when it comes to shooting with my Sony, that 24-70 Sigma lens is heavy as balls. You start to think, okay, what do I actually need on this shoot and what don't I need as opposed to just throwing everything in. Same with the drone, everything. Um, 
planning your shoots becomes a big thing and when you've got a lens that's this small and versatile it's always a bonus. saying this lens is super super adaptable really really versatile uh, as I kind of said it towards the end of my last point there is you can use it as a portrait lens and I would view it almost as an essential portrait lens to have uh, but it's just as usable for landscape photography street photography product photography um, anything you want to use this lens for it'll be really good astrophotography because they're all really fast lenses as well so you'll be able to get loads of light in loads of bokeh in and they're wide enough that you know you can capture kind of very variously uh, various landscapes as well and it's just that nice sweet point between being a super wide lens and being like telephoto it's bang on <laughs> As you can tell, I'm not in my office. I'm actually in Dublin. And it's like two weeks after I started filming this video, so here's a little bit longer from here, but anyway, doesn't take away from the point. Oh well, yeah, and admire the amazing Lego collection of Jamie's behind me while I finish this video. <laughs> uh, as I said, the last point I was making is that they're really versatile lenses, and, and that's 100% true. You can use them in loads of different situations. Uh, moving on from that though, there is a, an aesthetic that people like about them is that between 50mm and kind of 85 is like that sweet spot of where your vision works as in like it's most similar to how you perceive the world. Now that isn't strictly true because you know you have peripheral vision but you only focus on one thing or like an area an area within that vision and that's where the 50mm kind of without going into absolute crazy detail matches the most so for that reason you know, people will tend to gravitate towards like about 50 millimeters whenever they look at photos and just be like, oh, I like these ones. We have a uh, Elgato looking to escape. This is why I'm in Dublin, by the way. Say hello, Ash. Ash is the, the tripod cat, aren't you? Say hello. It's lovely, okay, I'll let you go. So lastly, uh, one of the reasons I would recommend picking up is that this cheap, they're cheap and there are options. You can spend as much as you want to spend on a 50mm lens. You can go and get the security camera lenses that some places have and I've seen uh, 50mm f2s on Amazon for like £40. Go up a step from that and get Canon's 50mm or Nikon's 50 uh, f1.8, that's probably about about 150 euros, 200 euros, you can find these, there's loads of them, they're everywhere. I've got two, I've got Canons and I've got Nikons. Um, vintage lenses, I've got a Pentax 50mm uh, f2 that I use. There's no autofocus on it, but it's an absolutely amazing lens. I love using it. I've actually adapted that lens to every single one of my cameras and love the results that I've got from it. And then you can spend up to like 2,000 400 quid on a, a Sony 50mm f1.2 if you want. You can go anywhere with the, the 50mm range. They, there's options for kind of every price point in between. And um, all you gotta do is find what you wanna spend your money on and go with that. That's what I would say. I don't know, if you've been Nifty 50, uh, how's your experience been with them? I absolutely love them. So I think I'll end it there. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little trip to Dunry uh, and well, Dublin, kind of, you don't really see much of it. I've got some shots, go to my Instagram, there'll be posts about uh, Dublin um, there. Uh, if you do wanna see it, that's just Owen underscore Bell. Um, beyond that, let me know about your experiences with the old nifty 50s and what your favorites are. If you did enjoy this video, throw it a little like and a, and a subscription would be great. And if you think so, yeah, leave a comment below, give me a, a big subscription and have a good one guys.